About a month ago, I gave you some video tests of the Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter lens. That's this guy right here. I have the box in my hand because I'm currently using this lens to record this video. In that video, I really didn't give you a review or tell you what I liked about it or what I didn't like about it. I basically just tested its low light performance, image stabilization, and what was the last thing I tested? Oh, and depth of field. But today I want to provide you some closure and tell you what I like about this lens, what I don't like about it, and who I would recommend it to. I really love the focal range of this lens. It starts nice and wide at 12 millimeters and it zooms in all the way to 35 millimeters. And since this lens is on a micro four third sensor, the crop factor is two. So basically you're actually shooting with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. And my favorite lens for photography is the Tamron 24 to 70 because you get that wide field of view at 24 and you get that zoomed in field of view at 70. So you can cover a great range of focal lengths with this lens and that makes it a great multi-purpose lens and a great travel lens. Another thing I love about this lens is it has a constant aperture of 2.8. I like this for two reasons. First, when you zoom in, you're not going to lose any light. The aperture will stay constant at 2.8. And compared to the kit lens, that has an aperture range of 3.5 to 5.6. So that means when you zoom with your kit lens, you're going to be losing light. Now the other reason why I like this constant aperture is because I get two-thirds more stops of light. And that allows me to shoot at a slightly lower ISO and that gives me a cleaner image. Another nice feature about this lens is it has image stabilization. So when I'm hand holding this camera, let me take it off my tripod. When I'm hand holding it, you don't notice all the vibrations in my hand. And this is also really helpful when you're panning. So when you pan from left to right or right to left, the shot should be nice and smooth and it's not jagged. So I really love that there's image stabilization built into this lens. This lens is also really sharp. I paid just slightly under $1,000 for it. So I would hope it would be made out of quality glass and it is. Um, you can just watch a few clips that I'm going to play right now. Now there are a couple things I don't like about this lens. They may or may not be deal breakers to you. The first thing is lens flare. Even with the hood on it, I still get issues. Uh, with a little stray light, we get these nasty lines and blotches in the lens, so that can be very distracting. If you're not going to be shooting with the sun really low, then that shouldn't be an issue at all. Now the second thing is, it's kind of hard to get a nice shallow depth of field or blurry background with this lens, especially at wider apertures. Now, if you know how to use this lens appropriately, or if you understand how to get a shallow depth of field, you can definitely make it work. And some tips are, you want to get close to your subject, you want to leave a nice distance um, behind your subject, you also want to shoot at a nice low aperture, like 2.8, and you want to increase your focal length. And by doing that, and if I focus on my face, we get a pretty nice shallow depth of field, and this is at 35 millimeters. If I'm shooting closer to 12 millimeters, the bokeh behind me isn't that great, as you can see with um, these lights right here and these lights down here. So again, let me go to 70 millimeters and show you what the bokeh looks like real quick. So I'm at 70 millimeters at f2.8. Let's try to find some lights behind me. We don't get that big of a bokeh. Our bokeh balls are pretty small. So if you're looking to get the cinematic effect, I wouldn't really recommend this lens for you, but if you want to use this lens more for general use, like to record your family and friends, 
or just um, to use it as a travel lens, this is a perfect lens for you. If you are interested in purchasing this lens or getting some more information, click on the first link in the description below. And if you use that affiliate link, it helps support me and it helps support this channel so I can make more free content for you guys. I will be buying the Metabone Speed Booster. I actually have it right here. And this will allow me to attach my Canon glass. Uh, specifically, I want to try my Nifty 50 and my 85mm f1.8 lens with this Speed Booster. And in addition, I plan on buying the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter f 1.8 lens. And I heard with that lens, in combination with the Speed Booster and the G7, you can get some nice cinematic shots and some nice shallow depth of field. So stay tuned for all of that. Be sure to subscribe to this channel by clicking on the red subscribe button right down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys very soon.